So I thought I would compile all the footage we've garnered so far of snakes eating a variety of prey items. I know people really enjoyed the videos of me feeding things to my king snakes last time, so I thought I'd make a big compilation of everything they've eaten. I really want to emphasize the importance of variety here and how interesting you can make feeding to a snake. You don't just have to hand over the tongs to the snake and that be it. So we've got a Syrian hamster here. I don't always tong feed, sometimes I like to leave the item at the opposite end of the enclosure and then just let them find the food in their own time. During this time you can see their heads twitching back and forth, their tongue really going, you can really see them trying to figure this out. And it extends that time of feeding from like the 30 seconds of you handing it to them with a tongue to 10, 20 minutes of just finding the food and then eating it. This Syrian hamster was just frozen thawed, bought the same way as any other prey item from my local raptor shop. Now this clip is my female Olivia eating infertile bearded dragon eggs. Now this twitching, this twisting of the head to try and manipulate that egg. I don't think I would see this behaviour unless I'd fed them this food item. Which is why I think it's really important to feed a variety of food items. Because all these different natural behaviours that your species may have, you may not actually get them out at all in their entire captive lives unless you give them the opportunities to do so. I don't get this twisting of the head motion when I feed them rodents. And Charlie here, the California king snake, eating and performing the same behaviour, that twisting head motion to manipulate the egg, it just shows that this isn't an individual quirk to Olivia, this is a natural species behaviour. It used to be that the Mexican black king snake was a subspecies of the Californian king snake, but since then there's been a taxonomic revision, and actually they now say that the Mexican black king snake is a Californian king snake. They now regard the Mexican black king snake as just a colour form of the California king snake. That doesn't mean go out and hybridise the lot. It's really important that we as a hobby maintain them as if they are separate still, because give it five, ten years down the line. They, there might be another taxonomic revision and they say it is a separate subspecies or even a species again. So keeping things separate and clean ensures that no matter what happens, you've always got things not muddied up, if that makes sense. This is my more shy male, Monty, being fed a chick. Chicks are such a good prey item. Not only are they cheap, but they are adequate in terms of nutrition for a snake. Here he comes. And disappears in a puff of feathers. <laughs> 
Now this footage makes him look really creepy. I don't know about you, but that head in the dark and that kind of just glazed over look as he slowly consumes the chick. I find that really creepy and I've never ever found a snake creepy in my life. But this one bit of footage with that kind of head swallowing an animal, I just find that really creepy. I just It's just really cool in general as well. So you can see Charlie getting really ready here for this mouse. She's very hyper focused when it comes to feeding. I remember in this footage I tried to get her to catch it. Because she normally does that off camera. So I wanted to drop it above them and she normally grabs it before it even hits the floor. This is Olivia with an XL, or is that a medium mouse? I think it might be a medium mouse here. But you can, again, you can see how I've left it in a spot and she has to go and find it. She has to use that tongue. She has to really search around all the nooks and crannies. Discern between all the different scents in that enclosure. Really get them working cognitively. Because... You think about how much time snakes actually spend foraging, especially colubrids that aren't necessarily ambush predators. How much of their time and activity budget during the day is spent actually hunting? And we take that to captivity and that translate into the 30 seconds of just being given food off the tongue. That entire part of their behaviour and their daily activity is not being catered to. So I think it's really important. I just found this really cool how she's actually eating it hanging as if she's like a green tree python or something. So I remember this was a multi mammoth or African soft fur, however you want to call it. But I remembered I fed a series of these in the enclosure that added up to the equal amount of grams as like a large mouse and she had to go around the enclosure and find each individual one and it was just it's just more enrichment
people say, oh, it has to be the same size rodent each time, and it has to be the same size food each time, an exact amount of grams. It doesn't. You can feed like smaller items equaling to the weight of the normal prey item you offer, or just offer smaller items in between normal prey item sizes. So what are the smaller that week? Do people think that a snake finds the exact same size rodent, an exact weight rodent, weekly in the wild? They'll grab whatever they can get. Now this was a deceased corn snake that I received from my local reptile shop. Now this was in the freezer for like six months, mind you. So I was not particularly concerned with parasites. What's funny is this corn snake was actually equal in size to her. So I really did push things to the limits here. She's basically eating an animal the same size as herself. Now I did ask the shop, I said have you had crypto in the shop? Um, I am kind of like close friends with the manager and stuff. So this isn't like a, wasn't like coming across as like a normal customer. I doubt they'd be too open about having crypto if it was the case. But because you know I'm friends with them and all this, so I was like, genuine answer is it crypto or not? If you've had crypto, I won't take the snakes. They said no. Um. Obviously, even after I fed snakes to these animals, my entire collection was tested for crypto um, multiple times. It came back negative. But there is a risk in feeding snakes to snakes. So unless you're 100% sure that this is a safe prey item, like it's something that you've culled yourself or something, then just be very careful with doing this. It's incredibly enriching and natural to the snake, but disease wise, just be careful there. You can see here, she's really like shoveling it back. This side to side motion as an entire snake, the length of herself goes down into her. I just find that absolutely fascinating. Now you may see this either cut up or at like a really high speed because in real life, this this actually occurred over like an hour, so it had to be cut up to be viewable in one sitting. I think this shot is absolutely beautiful. You see the cloaca there with a little bit of blood on that corn as it's going down. You can, if you look closely, you can actually see the teeth of Olivia there. And it just looks amazing. The bulge in the throat there as it's going down and it's expanding. I just find it amazing to look at. You can actually see some rostral abrasions and some general abrasions to the head area here. This is when I had a lot of rocks and a lot of... Uh, dusty material in the enclosure in this bioactive 
Um, she would dig around, and that's how she would scuff up her face as she was digging. Since I've actually moved to shavings, um, my snakes actually look a lot better and not so scuffed up. Now this quail chick was bought from the Rector shop again. We have a quite a good selection here in the UK. But this is quite a large item for Charlie here. Again, I mix it up the size and the time of week and the species of prey item I offer. I really try and mix things up, make things as riching. Different smells, different textures, different body shapes to manipulate. It's something that I regard as really important. Now with this royal python, or bull python, however you want to say it, it's the same story as the corn. Um, this died of being a non-feeder, I was told. Again, tested for crypto after this, no issues. Was frozen thawed again, so I wasn't concerned about parasites. My snakes are all clean. Just the risk level you are happy to take is your own risk level, your own circumstances and how you obtain these snakes is up to you. So I'm not saying do or don't do this, completely up to you and the level of risk you're willing to take. When that, when that royal fell then, the twitch that you saw in that snake, because at that point when that was sliding down the cork, you could tell she thought that was alive then. And you could tell that that brain fired up there. I think I got a little glimpse there of what I would see in the snake if I fed live prey items. Not something I'm going to do anytime soon, mind you, but... It was certainly like the, a next level of alertness I saw then. Now I've sped this footage up because it took her a long time to eat this again. And I think it's really interesting watching them shovel it back at high speed. So if you're wondering about all the nutritional info or what can you feed or what do these animals have eaten in the wild, then I have a playlist on feeding snakes on a lot of dietary information, wild studies, the whole shebang. So if you're interested in watching just snake feeding footage or you want to know how to feed your snake better, then watch this playlist.